In an earlier video, we saw that my biological age for blood test number seven in 2022 was about 17 years younger than my chronological, and that's using Levine's biological age test, PhenoAge. Similarly, when looking at aging.ai, it was about 22 years younger. So with that in mind, what's contributing to these data? So first, let's have a look at supplements. So in terms of supplements, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism in my early to mid 20s. So I've been taking levothyroxine for about half of my life. And then also in the winter, for about eight to nine months out of the year, I supplement with vitamin D, 1,000 IUs per day. And that's it for supplements. No other supplements, including geoprotectors or senolytics, at least for this blood test. Now, the story is going to be a bit different for the next blood test, blood test number one in 2023, as I've been taking glycine since mid-December and an oral probiotic that's aimed at optimizing my oral microbiome. So the supplement story will be a bit different for uh, this corresponding uh, video for blood test number one in 2023. So that brings us to, to diet, and more specifically, what's the diet composition that corresponds to this blood test? And we can see that here. This is the average daily dietary intake that goes from the day of blood test number six to the day before blood test number seven, so October 24th through December 11th of 2022. And for that 49-day period, what we're looking at is the average, diet, uh, average daily dietary intake for that 49-day period. So first, we've got seven foods that are consistently at the top of my list, and I covered that in an earlier video. The correlations are about the same. So if you're interested in the why for the foods that are at the top of my list, that video will be in the right corner. What I want to highlight, though, is that my diet isn't always clean, and that's uh, purposefully done because if I completely eliminate junk food, that'll set me up where I'm uh, craving it all the time. So I purposefully intend a couple of days at the most to have some junk food so that it keeps me on track for the rest of the period. So for this 49-day period that corresponds to test number seven in 2022, I had two separate cheat days. And on those days, I had cheesecake and I also had uh, candy, which is known as Mike and Ike. Now, if you look at the cheesecake, that's about 25 calories on average per day for cheesecake. So it was a big slice. It was about 1,200 calories of cheesecake that I had on a two, in a two-day period. And for the Mike and Ike's, that's three grams, an average of three grams per day. So it was, it was about a 150-gram box or around 600 calories of candy. So to put those, two, uh, in, put those two data into perspective, in terms of calories, the cheesecake and the candy contributed 1.7% of my total calories during this 49-day period that preceded uh, test number seven or that corresponded to test number seven. All right, so then that brings us to macronutrients and micronutrients. How do they correspond or what do they look like uh, as they correspond to test number seven? So let's start off with calorie, protein, and fat intake that corresponds to test number seven in 2022. So the average daily calorie intake was 2235 calories per day. And I should mention, for those who don't know, I weigh all my food with a food scale every day. So these are not uh, estimates. These are as close as you can get to exact amounts. Now, 2235 calories per day is the lowest average daily calorie intake that I've had since, starting, since I started tracking diet in April of 2015. In terms of protein intake, the average daily protein intake was about 97 grams per day. And to put that into perspective, it's about 17.3% of total calories. Now, as a last note on for protein intake, 96.6 grams of protein per day equates to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram body weight when considering that my body weight currently is about 68 kilograms. So that's important because 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram body weight is on the ascending portion of the curve for optimizing muscle mass as a result of strength training, which I consistently do. And if you missed that video, that too will be in the right corner. All right, so then that brings us to fat, and we can see total fat and all of its individual components shown here, and cholesterol. So note that uh, these data, calorie intake, protein intake, and all of the diet data is tracked with chronometer. So after I weigh the food, I enter that data into chronometer, and then I put all of that data into an Excel file. And if you're interested in tracking your own diet, there'll be a discount link to use chronometer in the video's description. So in terms of total fat, the average per day, my average fat intake per day was about 83 grams or 82.8 grams per day. And that's about a third of my total calories come from fat. Now, if you're interested in the further breakdown, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated, and trans fats, those are shown here. So uh, you can have a look if you're interested. All right, so then that brings us to carbon intake. And that's what we can see here. So starting from the top, uh, three, 314 grams of carbs per day seems like a lot, but note that net carbs equals carbs minus fiber. So for this blood test, the average daily fiber intake was about 87 grams per day. 
and when subtracting that from carbs, we get a net carbs of 228, about 228 grams of net carbs per day. Then we can calculate its percentage of total calories by multiplying net carbs by four calories per gram, and then dividing the 914 calories that come from that by average daily calorie intake, multiply that by 100, so we get 40.9% of my diet came from carbohydrates or net carbs. Now, note that there's a glitch in chronometer's carb counts, and that's because when, when considering that protein and fat were set about 17 and 33% of my total calories, when we subtract that from 100%, I should get 49.4% carbs. So regardless if I start with carbs at, with, uh, start, at, start with 314 grams of carbs or 228, neither of those yield 49.4% carbs. So if anyone else has come across this problem in Chronometer, uh, please leave a comment. Or if anyone else uses a different diet tracking app that doesn't have this problem, I'm happy to try something else out that may be better. Uh, also, if you leave a comment and indicate what you, uh, what you use. So then in terms of carbs too, I also track uh, total sugar intake and more specifically total fructose because I have a tendency to eat a lot of fruit. I have a sweet tooth. So I keep an eye on how much fructose because fruit is mostly comprised, comprised of fructose. So in terms of total fructose, note that sucrose uh, divided by two equals fructose uh, because half of sucrose is fructose. So when adding those two together, I get a total fructose of about 59 grams per day. Now, 59 grams of total fructose may seem like a lot, but for me, this is my lowest fructose intake since I started diet tracking in 20, 2015. So there is uh, good news and there is progress on that front. I've actually had uh, du uh, double the intake, close to 115 grams of fructose per day in the past. So that I've cut that in half over time is a, is a big, uh, big win. All right, so what about micronutrients in terms of vitamins and minerals? So uh, it may be hard to see, but here's the full bite, uh, vitamin list and, and how much that I take in uh, per day. And note that I do have purposeful targets. And more specifically, those purposeful targets that I aim for are vitamin B3 or niacin, beta carotene, and vitamin E. So f for me, in my data, niacin has a strong positive correlation with blood biomarkers, meaning a lot more going in the right direction than wrong with a relatively higher intake of niacin. So I aim for uh, higher than 40 milligrams of niacin per day because based on that data, higher may be better in my case. Conversely, higher may not be better for beta carotene and vitamin E, which in my case are strongly negatively correlated with uh, more biomarkers going, blood biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. So I don't aim for my highest intake, but I've been titrating those down to try to find the sweet spot where I'm not making more biomarkers worse than uh, sending them in the right direction. So for me, uh, beta carotene around 50,000 micrograms, which equals 50 milligrams per day. And again, this is from whole food. And vitamin E at 20 milligrams, but not higher. Uh, note that the RDA is 15 milligrams. So I'm above the RDA, but not at my highest vitamin E intake, which has been close to 30 milligrams per day. And then last but not least, we can see my mineral, mineral intake. And all of these are higher than the RDA if you're interested in specific amounts. Uh, I don't have purposeful targets here, but I do try to fo follow the correlations uh, as they correlate with blood biomarkers. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, in terms of epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. And as I mentioned, we do have merch. So if you're interested in that, that link will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.